art is the practice of tradition and process. Modern folk artists do not always follow the strict characteristics outlined by scholars. However, folk artists today oftentimes combine new and old styles with traditions into a true American medley of shape, color, and personality. Traditional characteristics of content and process echo in artists of today. On an old Hoosier farm about 25 minutes northwest of Muncie, Indiana, Ron Payne has for many years produced the artwork of his surroundings and of his life. Through painting and woodworking, Ron has created hundreds of pieces of artwork. This art emphasizes folk traditions, but also new creativity. His artwork is a representation of American traditions, such as saw paintings and relief wood carving, but also represents many of his own original ideas. His artwork is a representation of a kind of 21st century folk artist, not entirely traditional, but echoing the American folk traditions of the past. My name is Ron Payne, uh, born and raised in Fairmount, Indiana. Graduated high school in 1976, got married in 1983, and started having children in 1986. Ron's interest in art, an interest that would eventually grow into a passion, began at a young age. Like many children, coloring books provided his first exposure to the world of art. During his high school years, a good friend became one of Ron's first important influences. Probably from a young age and coloring, coloring books and drawing pictures out of the comic strips. When I was in high school, uh, one of my best friends was a tremendous influence on my wanting to be better, to be as good as he was. After high school, Ron soon began his adult life. He worked at Thompson Consumer Electronics in Marion, Indiana, and was busy beginning his family. The creation of artwork continued to play an important role in his life, however, and although he wasn't professionally trained and only painted by himself, Ron continued to pursue his passion. I've never really considered myself an artist. I'm just a guy that paints and carves. I haven't painted with anybody since I was a senior in high school. I've always done it by myself. I paint something I enjoy. Sometimes I may not paint for a year and then all of a sudden wake up one day and I've got to paint. I gotta, I gotta do it. One of the most fascinating aspects of painting for Ron is the interlude between the various colors. One of his personal favorite paintings is a scene of a stampede on the western frontier. He also speaks to the thrill of seeing the end result of weeks and sometimes even years of work. And the thing about painting is I like mixing colors, seeing what color makes another color. That painting up there on the wall, the cowboy and the stampede during the thunderstorm. The part when you get done with a painting and you step back and you look at it and you can't believe you've done it, makes you want to do it again. Ron draws upon many sources for inspiration. Sometimes other artists or artwork influence him. Other times, scenes that remind him of childhood influence the artwork. The one constant that seems to remain rather dominant in his work is the vitality of nature and the sense of fulfillment that follows after a piece of artwork is completed. I believe everything that you see you're influenced by. Anytime you see a piece of work by another artist, you're influenced by that. You see something you like or you don't like and you try to put that within your artistic realm of doing a painting or a carving. It's just not just one artist or one. There are several that were big influences like Leroy Neiman, C.W. Russell, Frederick Remington are the top three that probably influenced me more in all in different ways. I like doing farm scenes because I grew up out in the country on a farm. I do a lot of western paintings because I like horses. I like seeing them run. So most of my paintings are stuff moving. So you can see if you can capture movement within a painting. Probably Western paintings. I've always been a John Wayne. He's been like an all-American stand-up for your rights individual. So I guess that's why I've always liked Westerns. So I painted Westerns, and I guess you can associate that to John Wayne. But basically, I do it. Get my joy out of it. I can't believe I've done it. Go on. Some of Ron's most folk-influenced pieces are his saw paintings. Partially influenced by other saw paintings themselves, and partially motivated by the simple joy of doing the paintings, he speaks about his favorite saw painting and why he was pleased with it. I have seen it before, different times other people have done saws and I always thought I could either do just as good or better and always wanted to try it. 
once I tried the saws, they were a lot of fun. It's a lot quicker. You can do one in a, you know, in a shorter amount of time than you can on canvas or a carving. And you still get that thrill of watching your paints mix together as you're brushing them on. They're real fun. Uh, the one with the seagulls was the lighthouse. It turned out pretty much the way I wanted. It shows depth from the bottom of the saw to the top of the saw. You're trying to show depth. And in every painting you do, you're trying to show the depth where a person is looking into it. You can see far away and plus up close. Aside from painting, Ron also greatly enjoys wood carving. And although he did spend a short amount of time in a wood carving club, most of Ron's woodworking remains self inspired. In 1990, I was talking to a gentleman I was working with that was doing it. Uh, he brought in a little wooden carving from a stick and, and just captured my uh, something I wanted to do and he helped me get started and it gives you a, a difference between a carving and a painting. It gives you a three-dimensional look at a picture or an object. Yes, when I first got started, the guy that got me started, we went and joined a club. But it was just a hobby. The best time for me to sit and carve or paint was just a free minute here and a free minute there. I didn't have time to drive 20 miles to a club, and all these gentlemen were retired. I enjoyed it, but it's just their time and my time was a different time. When I first got started carving, a couple of the first fish I did were some bluegill. I went to, uh, I went with this wood carving club to Matthews, to the Matthews Cover Bridge, and there was a gentleman and his wife walked up and was talking to me about the fish and asked me how I mounted real fish on this wood. Kind of throw me for a loop, didn't know how to answer that. And I tried to explain that they were wood, and the guy said, no, no, no. Did you freeze them? I said, no, I carved them, they're out of wood. No, he said. So then I realized I must be halfway decent for a gentleman to stand there and kind of go back and forth with me about wood and fish. Although Ron's artwork is indeed quite good, and in some cases can even be mistaken as real animals, Ron has only ever sold two pieces of his artwork, and they were to close family friends. I, I don't carve or paint to sell. I have sold, I did sell a sea captain one time to a lady. She was doing a scene up on her wall of lighthouses, so I painted her a sea captain. That's how I got started on that. I painted some fish for a guy in Fort Wayne for his father for his birthday. He's a big fishing fanatic, so I did some fish for him. Any artist can tell you that not every piece of art comes out perfectly every time. Ron emphasized this fact that sometimes not every piece makes the shelf. I've never been very pleased with any of the carvings I've done with James Dean, but I've done some clay sculpturing of them. And one day I will do one that I'm happy with. I've just never been happy with anything I've done. Carving is the same way as painting. I may not do one for a year, and then all of a sudden, boom, I gotta do it. But they don't always come out. They don't always make the shelf. Sometimes they go out in the garage. Sometimes they get put off to the side and never get finished. Just because you see it, don't mean you reach it. I paint something I enjoy. Sometimes I may not paint for a year and then all of a sudden wake up one day and I gotta paint. I gotta, I gotta do it.